What's going on guys, it's Frito here for your Overwatch. In today's video, we're gonna be going over an ultimate how to counter Doomfist guide, discussing all three roles, things to look out for, common mistakes, the right heroes to pick, and how to engage up against the new and improved Doomfist. All of that right after this quick message. Today's video sponsor is Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a membership club delivering you a box of awesome premium goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. 90% of the products come from small brands, many based right here in the USA. The American barbecue rub in the carnivore box is made by the great American Spice Company in Rockford, Michigan. You fill out a preference quiz and then each month they introduce their members to new cool products. Outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, even live oysters. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. You preview your monthly box and decide to either keep it, swap it, or skip. It. This time I got the chill box that has the day tripper cooler bag. The quality of this thing is insane. Three storage components, 23 liter capacity. I'm going to the beach this weekend and I can take cool beverages in here. Also inside tucked away, it comes included with a stainless steel bottle opener. And this one I got the scorch box, which is an assortment of hot sauce. It came with six of these and a helpful Scoville guide for the uh, pepper intensity. So now I got a different hot sauce for each job. I'm gonna use Lane's one-legged chicken buffalo sauce this weekend on my chicken wings and we'll whip out the Calabria, which has got garlic in it, which is really gonna boost some leftover pizza I got in the fridge. Thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna try them out and get 20% off your first box of awesome, head on over to bespokepost.com forward slash your Overwatch 20 and use our code your Overwatch 20 at checkout. We'll start with the tanks. And because there's more overlap with the heroes playstyles nowadays in Overwatch 2, a lot of the rules will develop can go for multiple heroes. Roadhog is the strongest answer right now, but any tank with a stun that is durable can follow a lot of the same tips. Orisa and even Sigma can adapt the following playstyle. Number one, Doomfist is not that threatening until he gets empowered gauntlet. Try to remember that tanks are often the characters with a lot of the high damage spam. So do not be the one who powers up the enemy Doomfist, dooming your team to death. If you see him blocking, it's time to reload or wait or look for a different enemy to focus. Or if you have your stun from Roadhog, Orisa, or Sigma, then is the time to stun him out of that animation. And if you land stuns on power block, Doom is an incredibly weak hero because not only will you set him up for follow-up damage, but you'll take away his major empowerment tool. To enact this play style, try to remember that it is better for you to tank the enemy Doom's aggression. Don't be afraid to squish up against him and it's better for you to get hit by his abilities than your team so don't go off flanking simplify your play style to protect your supports alternatively you can play to defend against the doom this current patch would preference hog more not zarya but to future proof this guide or to give you options based on your hero pool zarya or diva could be options to peel against the doom and the biggest ideal play you want to make is landing a bubble to protect a support as the engagement comes in. So this requires you to play for value instead of tempo, whereas Zarya, of course, is stronger if she's spamming out her bubbles, getting high charge immediately. Try to remember that your front-facing stand and deliver damage is going to be better than Doom's until he starts rolling out and diving your backline. So you don't need to be too greedy for your damage because you're tankier and durable just holding the front line anyway. What the Doom is looking for is for you to use your cooldowns poorly, then finding the engage on your squishies quickly. So if you're more patient and bait him in, using bubble on a target as he's coming to slam them, it can protect them, give you charge anyway as Zarya, and extend the fight out. The longer the fight goes, the harder it'll be for Doomfist as you get stronger and his positioning becomes more well-known by the team and they get their cooldowns back to interact with him. We'll keep building on principles and mechanics of Doomfist as we go through each role. This game as Ana, I'm going against the insane Doomfist player Zebra, who is in top 500. A big percentage of his power is landing his abilities into you, gaining him more health. So ideally, as he does that, hitting a sleep on him can allow the team to let the sleep duration 
continue, which I know a lot of players often don't do, but leave the Sleeping Doom lie, as the natural shield health will decay as he's asleep, making him easier for burst eliminations, even if he does get cleansed. Now, I mentioned the sleep first, because in combination with the tank on your team, this is another option for a ranged stun of some sort, which can take him out of power block, rob him of his empowered gauntlet, which can set him up for further disables and focus fire. Big tips with the Ananade, though, I think a lot of players try to use it proactively, and Doom's got the mobility to get out of an engagement if he's got quite a lot of health still, even if he's antied. You need to use it when he has to commit, which requires you to hold it a lot longer than players often do. Keep in mind as well, if he does commit hard onto you as a very diveable target playing Ana, remember to mutual nade yourself and him because the most underrated aspect of Ana's gameplay is the heal boost on a target the enemy wants to focus fire. That includes you. So your other support will be able to pretty easily heal amp to peel for you when the dive comes in, assuming you guys are playing together. Now, if you're struggling to land the abilities, typically this is because players are kind of unaware about Doom's potential movement. He can cancel everything he does, which means his movement can be very sporadic and you can get baited into shooting towards a bad shot if you're not careful. Remember, at any time, he can cancel blocking, he can cancel his slam, and he determines how far he can go out of his punch jumps depending on how long he charges them or at the last moment cancel that as well and then he doesn't end up going as far as you thought the way that you solve this though is from your pre-fight positioning this is an ideal lane for me to play and a terrible engage for the enemy doom because whether he cancels the punch or comes right at me it's going to be a straight projectile to sleep him here team wakes him that's not great but with a heal amp on myself and not shooting his block he's not even a threat to me a little bit of healing will keep me alive live from everything he's got. The other easy way to set up a sleep on him is timing it for it to land at the end of his ult. This will be very important for you because he now gets the empowered gauntlet after his ultimate, then he is automatically a threat. And while he can be big and scary up close, sleep darts are easier to hit the closer he is. And if you use hip fire to heal, it's a bit harder for him to know where you're positioning. So being in clever spots, at closer ranges to make it hard for him to know where to expect you. My biggest tip for landing your disables on Doom is not to get baited by his razzle dazzle movement before he's actually a threat. He needs you to shoot at him and he wants you to whiff at him. Holding poised in safe positioning, baiting him in to fully commit hungrily after you keeps him at arm's reach and looking to nail him at the end of a full animation as opposed to overreacting quickly when he actually can dodge away from it will give you success. But there's another support character that I think is really getting slept on in the Doomfist matchup, and that's Batiste, who I would have said was weak to him in Overwatch 1, but since Doom actually has less CC and the position in general is played differently than it was in the first game anyway, Batiste can offer a lot of distance control and dodge his engagements entirely, as well as almost fully outheal the engages he puts on his team. Remember, Doom is less about bigger spikes of damage. He can combo to get quick kills, but for the most part, he does AoE damage. This plays right into Batiste's wheelhouse, healing in an AoE with his primary fire, burst healing with regenerative burst on a shift, even if something does get low, and using immortality field to save a teammate as Doom full commits onto them. Granted, CCing out of MO field still means Doom has options to outplay that, but between the rest of it, you have a lot of options to heal your team, all the while, by the way, with your own hit scan damage. And Bap's boots means he can jump out of a Doomfist engage, which nowadays comes more linearly, whereas in Overwatch 1, he had a vertical uppercut. So Bap in the sky fully nopes out of these engagements while being able to apply poke pressure. In this Coliseo game, I had nearly 7,000 damage and 8,000 healing. That's because Bap loses no healing uptime on his nades when he switches between healing his team and pressuring the enemy. And even with the nerfed Sombra hack, comboing on that disable, I do a lot of follow-up damage. Or punish the fact that he's not playing a defensive tank, so his team is open to my pressure damage while I outheal his engagements. It kind of takes Doomfist out of the game a bit. As Batiste, try to position behind where the Doom's likely to engage so you can hit direct heal nades on your team as he goes in. Place the immortality field away from his ultimate so it's not destroyed when it comes down, which will give you a chance to save your team and regenerative burst them up 
negating his damage and engagement. Remember not to contribute to damaging his power block, but in the meantime, as he's setting up to engage, use your range advantage to poke his head down and get him weak before he even comes in. We'll move on to talking about DPS picks now, but another cool one that you can add in with Batiste is Bastion, who Batiste has a great pairing with. Because Bastion has natural armor, extra health, a ranged poke for when Doom's at far, but also a transformation mode that basically means no tank can just dive in. Fortifying Bastion when he's in turret mode is one of the easier counters in the game. As BAP, look to try to burst heal to protect your Bastion as he transforms because the enemy is going to be focusing him. So a well-timed lamp to protect him before he goes down, but also using regen burst as he's half can keep his health high. Remember that little bit of armor health at the top of his health health bar is important to maintain as it will increase his overall tankiness as once you have armor health in overwatch 2 you take 30 percent less damage so keeping him topped up will be really strong up against doom playing as bastion similar to all the other rules we've already discussed you want to make sure not to be feeding his block which if he's using it it's a really good time to transform making use of the downtime when you shouldn't be shooting him anyway but remember bastion's nade applies most of its damage after it explodes which means you can stick it to him at the end of his power block to already begin working him down as with a lot of these tips remember to be a bit more greedy i see a lot of bastion players rotate in and out of sentry form when really you should be using it as an interaction ability when you see the enemy commit then you punish his ranged poke in sentry is just fine not great but contribute to the fight like that until the actual engagement comes. Remembering your job is to punish the tank and to have your cooldowns ready when he comes in. Here's a pickup game that I played in with a lot of legendary players in this lobby, and we can see a bit more of the interactions with characters like Reaper, Junkrat, and I have Fitzy on my team playing Sombra. Up against the legendary Doomfist player, get quaked on. First up, we'll talk about Reaper, who's very similar in the tank category, where how you want to position the big basically be the bodyguard of your supports. Reaper's lifesteal, higher health pool, and big shotgun damage can pummel so reliably into Doomfist that he will be afraid to go in on your support line. But this means you need to be using your pre-fight positioning and teleport in order to not be out of position to make sure that you're there to mark the Doom as he comes in on your team. Just like the tips on tank, you don't want to be out flanking and instead you want to hold. Consider it like you're making a trap for him. And remember, anytime you think you're going off on a flank, you're likely making a lane for the enemy Doom to exploit. Now, normally Sombra players like to flank the enemy's backline, but just like in the Reaper example, the more you do that, the better time Doomfist has, where he's weak to everybody on the team working together at once to burst him down. In this match, I ask for Fitzy to set up for a hack combo on the Doom, and because we're all there ready and waiting, we've got a lot of reliable damage onto him. Similar to the defend your support playstyle out of Reaper, Junkrat can do that with traps and mines. You can use your mines to juggle his engage and knock him off course as he's diving, and you can put a trap in front of your supports or yourself to play around to bait him into engaging. If he gets caught in that, it's really hard for Doom to survive. Just remember with either of these picks, often Doom has a much easier time because players are afraid to square up against him and be someone to tank the heat. So whether it's Reaper, Bastion, Junkrat, and I'd also add Torbjorn onto this list, characters that are tankier or have so much burst of damage to the front that they're good pocket targets for your healer to heal rather than your healer needing to take the punches to their face. You want to be the one in the front contesting it as these picks as they offer quite a bit of frontline control. Which picks can effectively do that tends to change based on the balance state. In theory, Brigida should be one of these heroes, you'd think, but outside of pin exchanges to put Doom on the ground for a moment, it's actually usually not the case. The other option, of course, is to pick heroes that are very escapable. Moira and Kuriko also have mobility to dodge Doom engaging, and there's heroes in the damage category that can fly or outright avoid the Doom altogether, but I think you'll find it a lot easier to counter Doom if you are picking something that you know you can control that absorbs the impact of his engages when the rest of your team is going to be running afraid anyway. Taking that responsibility can really alleviate a lot of the game sense required from your team because the more they position to be easily isolated by Doom without something to take it for them, 
the more opportunities Doomfist has to carry. One more underrated pick for you is Cassidy, who unlike some of these other options, has strong medium range poke as well, but with Fan the Hammer and a Sticky Nade, he also has a big burst of damage that he can lay into Doom after power block. Not to mention, he gets more tanky in his ultimate, so as long as it doesn't get stunned, Doom offers no interaction to protect himself or the team from it. So there's a lot of ways that Cassidy is a very strong pick against Doom as well. That's gonna be it for today's video. Let me know if you're struggling with anything in the comment section down below. To support the channel, check out today's video's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Their link will be in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it with a like, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos come live. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.